The solid design principles help you write great code that's easy to reuse and extend, and that's gonna save you a lot of time. Today, I'm gonna show you exactly how they work using practical examples in Python. Let's dive right into it. If you're new here, you want to become a better software developer and gain a deeper understanding of programming in general, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. The solid design principles were first mentioned in a paper written in 2000 by the software engineer Robert Martin, also called Uncle Bob. What's going on with all these weird naming schemes in computer science? Gang of four? Uncle Bob? What, what kind of vibe are we going for? I'm Uncle Arjun, and have I got something solid for you. Solid stands for five principles. Single responsibility, open closed, list of substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. I've talked about some of these principles before, but in today's video, I'm gonna take you through a code example of a sales system with order and payment handling in Python to illustrate each of these five principles in a practical setting. The example I'm gonna talk about today is a sales system. There's a class order that has items, quantities and prices and the payment status. And there are functions for adding items, computing the total price and paying the order. In this example, I create an order, I add a couple of items, then I print the total price and finally I pay the order. And this is what happens when I run the program. So very straightforward, we create an order of $210. We're processing a debit payment type and we're verifying that with a security code. And the pay method that you see here is basically responsible for dealing with the payment. The first of the five principles in SOLID I'm gonna talk about is single responsibility. We want classes and methods to have a single responsibility. Another way to say it is that we want classes and methods to have high cohesion, be responsible for only a single thing and that ensures that you can reuse them much easier later on. In this case, the order class does way too many things. I mean, adding items, you can understand it's part of an order because you want to be able to add items to an order. Computing the total price could also still be part of the order, but handling the payment definitely shouldn't be part of the order. So the order class has way too many responsibilities and we need to fix that. Now the way we can do it is for example, by extracting this pay method and putting it into a separate class. That has another advantage because if later we want to add other payment types like Bitcoin, or Apple Pay or whatever, we don't have to change the order class anymore. We can do it in the payment processing side of things. So let's do that. So I'm gonna create a class here called Payment Processor. And inside that class, we wanna have the different payment methods. Now, at the moment, the pay method is not ideal because there's like an if else statement in here that checks for the various different payment types. And I think we wanna do something different. So let's redesign this method and split it into two methods, pay debit and pay credit. So I'm going to copy over all this code and then I'm going to refactor it so that it fits with our new design. So instead of a pay method, we now have a pay credit method and a pay debit method. I'm just copying over everything and then remove what I don't need anymore. We no longer need to know the payment type because that's encoded in the method name. So I'm removing that here. And then I'm going to remove these if statements because we don't need that either. So now we have a pay debit and pay credit method inside a payment processor class. The only issue is that we want to set the order status to paid. So this means that the payment processor actually needs the order in order to process the payment. So we're going to pass that as a parameter. Now what we need to do is not call order.pay anymore, but create a payment processor and then use that. So now we have a separate payment processor and we can remove this pay method from the order class. So much shorter classes, we've made sure that order and both payment processor have their own single responsibility, which is handling, adding stuff to the order and processing the payment. And when we run this code, we are gonna get exactly the same result as before, except that of course, I need to add the order object to the payment processor. There you go. So that's the single responsibility principle. If you look at what we did, we increased the cohesion 
order has one responsibility, payment processor has one responsibility, but we also introduced some coupling. We'll deal with that later on. The second principle, the O in solid, stands for open closed. And that means we want to write code that's open for extension, so we should be able to extend the existing code with new functionality, but closed for modification. We shouldn't need to modify the original code in order to do that. Let's take a look at what this means in the order example. So we have our order, we have our payment processor, and we have creating the order and processing the payment here in the example. Now the issue is, if we want to add an extra payment method, like Bitcoin or uh, Apple Pay or PayPal or whatever, we have to modify the payment processor class, so that violates the open-closed principle. Optimally, what we'd like to do is create a structure of classes and subclasses so that we can just define a new subclass for each new payment type. In order to do that, we need to refactor this payment processor class. So let's turn it into an abstract class and create subclasses for each of the different payment types. So I'm going to import the ABC module here. And let's create an abstract payment processor class. That code we're going to need later. And we're going to add a single method, abstract method, that's called pay. So now what we can do is for each payment type create a subclass. For example, let's create a debit payment processor. And that's a subclass of payment processor. And similarly, let's create a credit payment processor. We don't need this code anymore. And now what we do here is create one of these instances of the subclass and then simply call the pay method. There we go. Let's run this. Yeah, still works, fortunately. But now we do not violate this open-close principle anymore because if we want to add another payment type, like PayPal, for example, we don't have to change the payment processor or the order anymore. Let's try and do that. So now I've created a new PayPal payment processor and we can use it here without having to change anything about the order class or anything related to that. The third principle is Liskov substitution. And that means that if you have objects in a program, you should be able to replace those objects with instances of their subtypes or subclasses uh, without altering the correctness of the program. Let's take a look again at this PayPal payment processor. Now, the thing is that PayPal payments don't work with security codes, but with email addresses. So if I wanted to fix that without changing anything in the code, what I probably should do is make sure that this is actually an email address and not a security code. So I'd do it like this, but then here I would provide some kind of email address. The issue is that this is not supposed to be security code, but an email address. So we're kind of abusing this type to do something different than we're supposed to. And that means we're violating the Liskov substitution principle. One way to solve this is by removing this dependency from the pay method and actually setting it in the initializer so that we can do different things in the initializer depending on the type of class we create. So let's remove security code here. And that means we also have to remove it here here and here. And then let's add an initializer. And we can add the same initializer to the credit payment processor. And the PayPal payment processor then gets an email address. And we should add self because now it's an attribute of the class instead of a method parameter. So there we go. So now if we create the PayPal payment processor, we don't pass the email address here anymore, but as a parameter to the initializer. And now let's run the code again, and we get again the same result. But now we're properly using the pay method instead of changing what parameters mean uh, in order to fit our specific use case. By the way, if you're enjoying this content so far, give this video a like. 
The fourth principle in SOLID is interface segregation. Interface segregation means that overall it's better if you have several specific interfaces as opposed to one general purpose interface. I've extended this example to now include a two-factor authentication inside the payment processor class. So there's an auth SMS that gets a code and that authorizes the payment. In the debit payment processor, I've implemented this in a very simple way, just putting a verified variable to true whenever we retrieve an SMS code. Normally you would do all kind of checks here. I'm not implementing that for the sake of simplicity. The issue is that a credit payment processor doesn't have two-factor authentication. So what we do here is I raise an exception that credit card payments don't support this. And PayPal payment processor does support it, so I have a similar kind of implementation here. And the only thing I added to the pay method is checking that the payment has been verified. And I'm only doing that in the debit and in the PayPal payment processor because for credit payments it's not allowed. Here you see an issue with defining a generic interface like the payment processor to do multiple things that are not always applicable to subclasses. In this case, not all subclasses support two-factor authentication. So it's better to create separate interfaces for this. And what you could do, for example, is add a second subclass of payment processor that adds SMS two-factor authentication capabilities. So let's add that class here. And this is a subclass of payment processor. Payment processor no longer contains this SMS authentication method, but we put it in the payment processor SMS class. And this one is no longer needed because it's already in the superclass. And now we can use this class and only inherit from that class if we support SMS authentication. So that's the debit payment processor and that's the PayPal payment processor. And then the credit payment processor, we don't need to put in this weird SMS authentication method that always raises an exception. So that's much cleaner this way. So that's interface segregation. So instead of one general purpose interface, we split it so that subclasses can have more meaningful behavior. Instead of doing this with classes and subclasses, you can also use composition, which arguably makes more sense in this example. What do I mean by that? So we have the authentication method here, but what we could also do is create a separate class called SMS authorizer that handles the authentication. Let's add that class. And that class has two methods, one for verifying an authorization code and second for checking that it's authorized. For now, let's assume that all codes are always valid. Obviously, normally you would add checks here to verify that the code is actually valid. And then we have an is authorized method that returns a bool. You could directly access the property, but this is a bit cleaner. A payment processor still only has a pay method, but we don't have this class anymore. But now our specific subclasses receive an SMS authorizer if they are using that functionality. So the debit payment processor doesn't only get a security code, it also gets an authorizer. And I'm adding a type in here to just make sure that we know what type of object we're getting. Also now we don't store the verified status anymore inside the payment processor because our authorizer is responsible for that. The auth SMS function is no longer there. And inside the payment method, we call the isAuthorized method from our authorizer. And let's do something similar for the PayPal payment processor. There you go. Now we need to change the code here to create this authorizer for us. And instead of calling auth SMS on the processor, we're calling it on the authorizer.
and now we should get a similar result as before. Oh, I think I forgot to change this class here. Let's try that again. Yes, there we go. So now what happened is that we used composition instead of more subclasses to create a similar effect. Myself, I tend to use composition more than inheritance because most cases I noticed I don't really need a big inheritance tree. I just need to separate the different kinds of behavior in my application and composition works very well for that. The final principle in solid is dependency inversion. I talked about that one before in another video. If you want to check that out, click here or here. Somewhere. Dependency inversion means that we want our classes to depend on abstractions and not on concrete subclasses. And in this code, this is currently an issue because the payment processes are depending on specific authorizers. In this case, an SMS authorizer. So in order to solve that is create another abstract authorizer class that you pass to the payment processors. Let's create that class. The authorizer class only contains an is authorized method. And SMS authorizer is now a subclass of that class. There we go. Instead of passing an object of this type to a payment processor, we're going to pass an object of this type. So let's change that here in the code. Let's run that. Now, nothing really changed in terms of behavior by doing this, but now we can add other things that make this easier to use. For example, let's say I want to create another authorization method like checking that you're not a robot. So let's add another class to deal with that. Just gonna copy over part of this code, but not a robot doesn't have a verify code method. It has a not a robot method. And now what we can do is create another authorizer here and call the not a robot method instead. So that's dependency inversion and that works because we made sure that the authorizer is of type authorizer and not of type SMS off. I hope these examples clarify what the solid design principles mean and how they translate to practical applications. If you've been using these principles already in your code, let me know in the comments below. Though it is important you know about these principles as a software developer, I do notice that as you get more comfortable in applying these, they kind of get ingrained into the way you work. In my case, for example, I don't think about these specific principles anymore when I write code. I just automatically gravitate towards solutions that incorporate them. I have a lot more Python videos in the pipeline, so make sure to subscribe and come on over to Discord to hang out and talk about software design. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay tuned for another video of Uncle Arjan, Posse of One. Son, why don't you come on over and sit on Uncle Arjan's lap? I love talking in third person. We don't want classes to have low cohesion and be responsible for too many different things. First, we're gonna explain the code example. Darn. And there are a few functions that help me create different orders. I hope these examples clarify these, these. I hope these examples clarify what the solid design principles mean. I just automatically.